Hey there nation, welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Chiefski, and we are back with another episode of Into the Bad Zones. This is our series of Nicomunda Battle Reports that is dedicated to a mini campaign, and this one is a fungal horror scenario that is fought between my two friends, Sergeant Sigmarine as well as Dark Lord Mac. Sergeant Sigmarine is bringing the sleeping dogs of Hell's Delac, while Dark Lord Mac is bringing Section 8 of the Venators. So my two friends will be playing in a fungal horror scenario where they will have to fight against carnivorous plants as well as brain leaf zombies in order to clear out the ingrowing invasion of monstrosities that is entering the Underhive. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to play some background music real quick. If you want to see exactly what each of the gangs is bringing for this scenario, go ahead and pause and take a look at your own leisure. So with that being said, let's get this battle report on a roll. So the narrow rules for this one is called Fungal Horror. The objective is to destroy the Fungal Horror before it takes over the entire dorm. Oh, be the very last game that ends up standing. Uh, for the rules for this one, if you notice in the middle of the battlefield, my friends are playing on a Zomortalis battlefield, you'll notice there is a forest that is spread up right in the middle of the battlefield. That is the Fungal Horror. And what ends up happening is at the end of each phase, the, horror, oh, the Fungal Horror will spread. I roll a d6 for each Fungal Horror, and on a 4-up, I, the Arbitrator, will use a scatter die to determine which new sector is overgrown. At the same time, whenever a new fungal horror pops up, D6 brain leaf zombies will also spawn within 6 inches of that new fungal horror. At the same time, there are also 4 crates spread throughout the entirety of the battlefield. Those crates are full of plant buster rounds, which is only enough to equip 2 fighters of a gang for each crate. And the reason why that's important is because plant buster rounds really destroy up uh, carnivorous plants as well as brain leaf zombies. For the rewards for this one, when it comes to experience, you earn one point of experience for each fighter who participates in the scenario. Also, for a fighter who takes out a brain leaf zombie out of action, they also earn a point of experience. And anybody who destroys a fungal horror forest, they also earn two experience points for themselves as well. For reputation, if one gang is left on the battlefield, they earn D3 reputation points, plus you earn one point of reputation for each fungal horror that a gang destroys. And of course, as always, if either gang bottles out, they lose one point of reputation. So, with the scenario rules over, let's go and talk about the battle plan for this scenario. Alright, so here's an overhead shot of the entirety of the battlefield. As you can see, my friends uh, Sergeant Sigmarine as well as Dark Lord Mac are playing on a 3x3 Zone Mortalis table. My friend oh, Sergeant Sigmarine is deployed on the far on the bottom left hand corner, while my friend Dark Lord Mac is deployed on the far right hand corner. And as you can see there in the middle of the battlefield, we have our very first fungal horror uh, sprouting up in the middle of the dome, and of course there are four brain leaf zombies scattered throughout. Also, if you notice as well, we also have uh, little crate uh, terrain pieces scattered throughout the battlefield. We have two crates on either side of the fungal horror, right in the middle of the uh, table. We also have one in the top left-hand corner as well as the bottom right-hand corner. And those uh, terrain pieces are kind of important because when you open up the crate, you get plant buster rounds. And what ends up happening is you add D6 wounds to every single um, fungal horror that you shoot at with those plant buster rounds. The only problem is though is that the plant buster rounds only work for weapons that fire bullets, so things like energy weapons are totally useless on this one as well. So that's another thing you gotta worry about. Now you're probably wondering why would you need plant buster rounds in order to destroy the fungal horror? The reason why is because any other weapon doesn't do anything against those fungal horrors. So because that the only thing that really hurts them is plant buster rounds. Um, you do you can use flamer weapons, flamer uh, based weapons can of course hurt them, but I don't think any gang in this one has flamers, so that really doesn't apply to them as well. And also, if you notice, there's also four uh, brain leaf zombies, two on either side of the forest, because I will be uh, uh, playing those characters because I'm the arbitrator in this scenario, and my friends will have to fight against each other as well as me, which should make it pretty interesting. So, with the uh, battle plan over, let's go and talk about the uh, deployment real quick. Alright, so starting with the Sleeping Dogs of House Delac. Over on the far left hand side, that is, I believe, Miss Spectre. She is a Ganger's arm with a flak armor, last gun, as well as last pistol. Right next to him on the right hand side is a two man fire team led by Painless Joe in the back. He is a gang champion who's armed with flak armor, plasma gun, as well as an auto pistol. He's also got the fast shot ability, so he treats shooting actions as uh, simple actions. And right next to him, as well as Slick, that's a Ganger who's armed with flak armor, as well as a bolt gun. To the right hand side is a four man fire team, in the back is Mr. Sin 
Sinister, the gang's leader, who's armed with mesh armor, a long rifle with a mono sight, as well as a gun shroud, and a last pistol. He's also got the commanding presence, as well as overseer ability. On the left-hand side is one of his jubies named Newbie, who's armed with flak armor and auto pistol, as well as stun grenades. In front is Ghost, another jubie who's armed with flak armor, auto pistol sword, as well as a stun grenade. And the right-hand side, that is Reckless. He's armed with flak armor. He's a ganger who's armed with flak armor, a grenade launcher with frag, as well as crack grenades, as well as two auto pistols. And on the bottom right hand corner of the battlefield is the last two members of the gang. On the right hand, on the leading of the front, on the far right hand side, that is Slight, who is a gang who's armed with uh, flak armor, twin auto pistols, as well as stun grenades. And right behind them is uh, Silk, which is another ganger. She's armed with flak armor, auto gun, as well as a last pistol. Now, two members of the gang, of course, are not participating in this battle report. That is Mr. Smug and Napalm Ned. And the reason why is because they're both suffering in recovery from grievous injuries in their last battle report. So that's good. Do the deployment for the Delax on this one. And in the top right hand corner is the Venators of Section 8. This is my friend Dark Lord Max uh, Gang. Over on the left hand side, he's got a two man fire team. Leading on the left hand side, that is Mayday. She's a hunter who's armed with mesh armor and axe, as well as a last gun. Behind her is a hunt champion named Red Harvest. He's got a long rifle and maul, as well as equipped with mesh armor. He's also got the fast shot ability, as well as the clamber skill, as well. Right beneath them is another two-man fire team. On the back, that is Red Cap Killer. He is a hunt champion with a bolt pistol, plasma pistol, mesh armor, as well as the gunfighter skill. And right in front of him, that is a new character that's been hired up by the Section 8. That is Grub Targuson. He is a uh, hive scum dramatis personae. So this is actually the very first time we're actually using special characters in our campaign, which is actually kind of cool. Up in the front, he's got flak armor, a fighting knife, as well as a shotgun with scatter and execution rounds. He's also got frag grenades. He's also equipped with the backstab, evade, as well infiltrate skill and my friend decided not to use the needle ways deployment on this one or use um, grub Targuson's infiltrate ability because he doesn't know really about the battlefield's gonna lay out so he kind of keeps his guys right next to him on the right hand side next to him is another two-man fire team in the back that is a wall al he's a hunt champion he's armed with mesh armor axe bolt gun as well as the fast shot skill and in front of him is another hunter named Manchurian black he's equipped with flash uh, mesh armor twin last pistols as well as frag grenades and on the far right hand side, we have our very last of our two-man fire team for the Section 8. Up in the front, that is the Kurgan. He is a hunter who's armed with twin servo claws as well as mesh armor. And behind him is a new recruit named the Pig Killer. He's armed with mesh armor, a shotgun with slug, scatter, and execution rounds. And he's got a stub gun with dum dum bullets. Now, two members of this gang are currently now on the battlefield. That is Valve the Impaler and Buzzkill. And the reason why is because they're also suffering from uh, grievous injuries from their last battle port, so they'll be skipping on this one. Also, the leader, the Saracen, is also out of action on this one because he is also recovering from a grievous injury. And that pretty much makes the deployment for Section 8. So, uh, that's the deployment for this one. And finally, in the center of the battlefield is my deployment, because I'm the arbitrator and I will be playing the NPCs in this battle report. Right in the center is a huge forest of carnivorous plants, that is the fungal horror, and on either side of it are two brain leaf zombies. Uh, two on the left, as well as two on the right, heading directly towards my friend's gangs. So with deployment over with, we go directly to the top of turn number one, and my two friends, Sergeant Sigmarine, as well as Dark Lord Mac, they roll off for initiative to see who has priority. All right, so that takes us directly to the top of turn number one, and my friend Sergeant Simmery Massey gets the initiative on this one. So this is taken directly into the action phase. The first thing that he does, he activates Mr. Sinister as gang leader, who then uses his commanding presence ability to also group activate Ghost, Newbie, as well as Reckless. The first thing he does, he charges in Ghost as well as Newbie. They both directly charge into the two brainleaf zombies on either side of that uh, fungal for forest. Um, Newbie actually managed to put a serious injury on one of the brainleaf zombies. However, in the rules, when a brainleaf zombie, the only way you can actually put it out of action is by putting a coup de gras on it, or by shooting it and putting it out of action directly. So because of that, that brainleaf zombie is still a threat. Ghost, on the other hand, he pretty much flubbed his rolls against his uh, brainleaf zombie, so the two of them are still engaged in close combat. Meanwhile, Mr. Sinister ran up to the crate. He also moved, spent one of his basic actions to move up to the crate. He then spent a basic action to open up that crate to disperse the two plant bursting rounds to himself, as well as Reckless. Reckless then, did, of course, did a basic action to move forward. He got the rounds from Mr. Sinister and then opened fire with his auto pistol directly into the fungal horde. Managed to put five wounds directly onto that forest of carnivorous plants. And uh, each uh, fungal horror only has six wounds, so that thing is almost dead, which is pretty epic considering. Meanwhile, on the other side of the battlefield, my friend Dark Lord Mac then starts with his first activation, activating Red Cap Killer, who then also group activates, uh, what's his name, Grub Targuson is his name, that's the uh, 
high uh, scum that they actually hired. Uh, they both actually spend a double action to charge forward, uh, charging directly into their respective Brainleaf zombies. Uh, Grub targets and manages to put a serious injury onto his uh, Brainleaf zombie, so he falls to the ground and he's bleeding out. At the same time, Ragcap Killer, he only managed to put two flesh wounds onto his Brainleaf zombie, so not much taking place over here on the far right-hand side. Meanwhile, on the bottom of the battlefield, my friend uh, Sergeant Sigmund then activates Slight, his Ganger Armor Twin Auto Pistols, and he spends both of his actions doing a double movement growing across the battlefield, moving up 10 inches in order to secure the uh, Plate Burster crate on the bottom right hand corner of the battlefield. Dark Lord Mac, on the other hand, then the group activates again, activating AWOL Al as well as Manchurian Black. Manchurian Black spends a basic action to move forward to the Plant Burster Round crate. He managed to crack that one open and get the Plant Burster Rounds inside of it. That was his second activation. He then, uh, of course, used that Plant Burster Round to give it to Manchurian Black as well as AWOL Al. AWOL Al does a basic move forward, moving up four to five inches as well, and getting the uh, Plant Burster Rounds from Manchurian Black. And then he opens up with two shots from his bolt gun because he has got the fast shot skill, managed to finish off that fungal horror right in the middle of the battlefield and as you can see revealed beneath it is a chaos sigil so now we know exactly why these fungal horrors are kind of growing up in the middle of the dome at the same time he also did himself an experience points for destroying the uh, two experience points rather for uh, destroying the very first of the fungal horrors on the battlefield Sergeant Sigmund then activates his gang champion, Painless Joe, who then also activates Slick as well. Uh, the Both of them move up for basic action. They both move up their normal 5-inch movement allowance. Uh, Slick tries to open fire with his bolt gun directly into the Brainleaf Zombie. Uh, that tar uh, Not the Brainleaf Zombie, I'm sorry. He tries to fire into, uh, what's his name, uh, Grub Targuson. Unfortunately for him, though, he misses his shot, so not much really happened from there. However, Painless Joe then moves up forward his 5 inches, opens fire with his plasma gun twice directly into the uh, sec uh, Section 8 uh, Venators because he's got the fast shot ability, so that guy can teach shooting actions as simple actions. He does manage to hit uh, Manchurian Black dead center in the mass, however, he wasn't able to wound him, so because of that, he is perfectly fine. He's just laying on the ground, currently pinned from taking a plasma bolt straight towards his body, which is actually kind of cool. So the rest of the photos is actually dedicated to individual movements taken across the battlefield. So if you're wondering why guys are grouped together, uh, that's why. Over on the right-hand side, my friend uh, Dark Lord Mac activates both um, the Kurgan as well as the Pig Killer. Both those guys take double actions to move forward, uh, doing two movement actions across the battlefield. The only problem, though, is that the Kurgan only moves three inches at a time, but the payoff is that the guy actually has a toughness of five, so he's pretty deadly in close combat. So because then he only goes up six inches, while the Pig Killer just kind of cl follows closely behind to give him some Support, so that way you can do some long range shooting because the Kurgan's only equipped with close combat weapons. At the same time, our friend Sergeant Sigmund also activates Silk as well, spending both of her actions moving forward 10 inches so she gets right behind uh, Slick. Uh, sorry, not Slick, so that way she gets right behind Slight, so that way they can also engage at the, uh, the two Venators coming down the far right hand corner, so that way they can secure that uh, plant bursting round crate. Meanwhile, on the top left-hand corner, Miss Spectre does a double movement, moving towards the upper left-hand corner of the battlefield, so that way she can secure the other crate of Plant Burst and Armor that is located on the top corner there. And at the same time, Dark Lord Mad does another group activation with both Red Harvest as well as Mayday. Mayday does a double movement across the top of the battlefield, heading toward the top left-hand corner as well, so she spends both of her actions doing that. And Red Harvest, he moves up one action with his basic movement allowance, and then he also opens up twice with his uh, long rifle directly into the Sleeping Dogs, because he has the fast shot ability as well. So Red Harvest directs both of his shots from his long rifle directly into Mr. Sinister, the leader of the Sleeping Dogs. The very first shot does hit him, but it doesn't actually cause any injury, so it actually automatically pins him. But the second shot, however, managed to hit him as well as to wound him as well. So because of that, Mr. Sinister suffers a serious injury, and he just flace plants directly down to the bottom of the deck, bleeding out on the ground. The only benefit from that, however, is that all of his Delacs around him actually pass their cool tests, so none of them actually break, which is actually kind of nice. So with that very final action for Red Harvest, that pretty much ends up the activation of uh, the action phases for both the Sleeping Dogs as well as for Section 8. And the rest of the turn is dedicated to yours truly, the Arbitrator, because now it's time for my Brainleaf Zombies to bring the pain. In the end, however, the only one Brain Leaf Zombie actually managed to do any good, and that was against Ghost, the uh, Juvie from the Sleeping Dogs. He actually put a serious injury on him as well in close combat, which is pretty bad for my friend uh, uh, Sergeant Sigmund because if he doesn't manage to make a recovery for his character, and the next turn, my Brain Leaf Zombie will just finish him off with a Critter Gras and take him out of action and also put a lasting injury on him as well, which would be really, really bad. And uh, that pretty much makes up the action phase for the uh, Brain Leaf Zombies. So with the action phase over with, we go directly to the end phase. 
So in the end phase, we roll for recovery for each of the members of the sleeping dogs that took injuries. Luckily from our friend Sergeant Sigmarine, um, Mr. Sinister actually recovers with a flesh wound. So because of that, he uh, rolls over and is actually pinned. He also suffers one flesh wound. Now he is only toughness too, so that does make him easier to wound, but he can still shoot, he can still fight, so he's still a pretty deadly adversary. At the same time, Ghost also recovers as well the flesh wound, and he gets back on his feet again because he's currently engaged in close combat with another brain leaf zombie. So like again, like again, he's only toughness too, so he is easier to the wound, but because of that, uh, Ghost can still fight and still shoot, so he's still a threat. Meanwhile, on the far right hand side there, my other Breen Lamp zombie, though, he doesn't make any recovery, so he is still seriously injured, which means he can be finished off with a coup de grace by newbie in the next turn. Meanwhile, across the battlefield, my Brain Leaf Zombie is still seriously injured, so Tarj, uh, what's his name, not Tarj, uh, Grub Tarshan, sorry, that's his name, uh, he's still engaged in close combat with that Brain Leaf Zombie, and Manchurian Black, he's still pinned, and not much is really coming from there. And of course, the very last part of the end phase, another fungal horror grows and sprouts up in the top left-hand corner of the battlefield, right next to that ammo crate full of plant burst rounds, and then four more brain leaf zombies also appear as well. Two on the right-hand side, and two on the left-hand side. The two on the right-hand side have a really good line of distance shot directly towards Mayday, while the two on the left-hand side also have a nice, good, long, uh, straight line charge directly to uh, Miss Spectre on the left-hand side as well. So with the end of turn number one, that pretty much brings up the end of the turn. Alright, so here's an overhead shot of the entirety of the battlefield at the end of turn number one. As you can see, the fungal horror has spread to the top left-hand corner. It looks like there's a race going on in the far right-hand corner between the Section 8 as well as the Sleeping Dogs to reach the uh, ammo crate in the bottom right-hand corner. At the same time, you also have Mayday and the, as well as Red Harvest in the top, reaching to the top left-hand corner, as well as Miss Spectre, who's also racing there as well in order to get secure that ammo crate. And of course, we have a lot of shooting and fighting taking place right smack dab in the middle of the battlefield with the majority of the Sleeping Dogs as well as Section 8 battling out right next to that chaos sigil. Corn would be pleased by the amount of blood that is being spilt. So at the end of turn number one, we go directly to the top of turn number two, and both my friend Starklord Mac as well as Sergeant Sigmarine, they roll off for initiative to see who will be going first. All right, so that takes directly to the top of turn number two, and the Delax managed to get the initiative on this one, so my friend uh, uh, Sergeant Sigmarine will be going first. The first thing he ends up doing is that he actually gets, uh, what's his name, um, Mr. Sinister back on his feet again. So he spends a basic action to recover from that. He also spends a basic action to fire his long rifle directly into Section 8. At the same time, because he also group activates as well, he then activates uh, the guys who are within three inches of range of him, which are uh, Slick as well as Ghost. He also activates uh, Reckless as well. So uh, Slick, he actually charges forward with a double action directly into the Brain Leaf Zombie on the left-hand side to help out Ghost, but unfortunately for him though, he failed his close combat attacks. And same thing with Ghost, he also failed his close combat attacks as well. So, well, the shooting that took place over in the left-hand side, Mr. Sinister had to open up fire, or actually, Gretz, uh, what's his name, Grub Targuson has actually managed to hit. He managed to hit that guy as well, as well as put a flesh wound on him. So, because of that, Targ, uh, Grub Targuson is actually now laying on the ground, bleeding out with a flesh wound. So, he is currently pinned. He's also uh, one, uh, one less than his toughness. He's only toughness too, so that part's pretty cool. The next shot that occurred, of course, was with uh, Reckless. Reckless actually spent a basic action aim, earning plus one to hit, and he fired a grenade launcher with a frag grenade directly into the middle of the section eight guys are being hit actually uh lands were actually right on top of that brain leaf zombie there that's laying on the ground with the two flesh wounds so he managed to put two uh that guy managed to get hit but nothing much happens there he also managed to hit as well as seriously injure um red cap killer as well not only did he actually take off wounds on that guy he also put a flesh wound on him as well so because of that he is now laying on the ground bleeding out and he's also one less toughness as well and luckily for my friend Dark Lord Mac, AWOL Al does pass his panic check. Same thing with Manchurian Black, so those guys actually don't flee. They just kind of stand their ground at this point. So in response, Dark Lord Mac then activates AWOL Al, his gang champion. He also group activates Manchurian Black as well. Manchurian Black spends a basic action to get back on his feet again after being pinned. He also spends a basic action to move up to the top next to, uh, Red, uh, to Red Harvest, so that way he can start lending some support for the uh, fungal whore on the top left-hand corner of the screen. And then of course, AWOL Al, he actually spends his actions opening fire with his bolt gun directly into uh, the sleeping dogs. And because the closest targets to him are a Brain Lake Zombie as well as Newbie, he decides to shoot directly into Newbie, actually puts a serious injury onto that poor Juvie, and also managed to put two flesh wounds on him as well. So because of that, things are not looking very good for Newbie at this point. Because if he does suffer a flesh wound, uh, he automatically goes out of action. He has to roll for a uh, lasting injury to see what happens to him. Uh, if he rolls a serious injury, he's just laying on the ground bleeding out, and the Brain Lake Zombie could recover and finish him off with a coup de gras. Or worst case scenario in the end phase, when he rolls for his recovery test, he rolls an out of action result 
result and also gets a lasting injury. So for all intents and purposes, Newbie is pretty much uh, combat ineffective at this point. On the top left-hand corner of the battlefield, Miss Spectre spends a basic action to move up 5 inches, so that way she gets a good line of shot directly to the Brain Leaf Zombies, and she spends her second action in order to shoot her last gun as well, but unfortunately for her though, she missed her shot, so not much is really occurring over there. At the same time, in the far left-hand corner, um, a group activation takes place again with Red Harvest, who also activates Mayday. Mayday just kind of stands her ground and takes aim with her last gun and fires it directly into one of the Brain Leaf Zombies. And unfortunately for her, she rolled a 1 for a hit, so not much really happened from there either. At the same time, on the far right-hand side, though, Red Harvest, he decides to open up with his guns, taking a basic action to aim, and then spending two simple actions in order to open fire with his long rifle once again. And in doing so, he does manage to hit Slick, but unfortunately for him though, he wasn't able to cause any injuries onto him, so because that Slick is just laying down on the ground, uh, currently pinned from being shot at with a long rifle, so not much death is taking place here in the center of the battlefield at this point. So for the rest of this uh, turn, all the group activations are done, so we're just taking photos of uh, collections of individual actions made by individual fighters. So over here on the top of the corner, as you can see here on the bottom right-hand corner of the battlefield, uh, once again, the Kurgan does a double movement, moving up six inches, turning towards the bottom right-hand corner to secure that plant crate. At the same time, uh, Slight also does a double action, moving right behind that crate, followed by uh, Silk as well. They're both of them moving 10 inches around that corner, so that way they can start getting that crate, and if they have to, also engage into uh, the Kurgan. Meanwhile, the pig killer spends a basic action to move up his normal 5 inches as well to peek around the corner. He does try to open up on Painless Joe with an execution round from his shotgun, but unfortunately for him though, he misses shots, so not much really happens from that activation. And the same thing happens with Grub Tarjan as well. He spends a basic action in order to get back on his feet again, then Dark Lord Mac actually has him target with his execution rounds uh, directly into uh, the sleeping dogs, but unfortunately for him though, he misses a shot as well, so not much really occurred uh, from that activation. So the rest of the turn is dedicated for my phase now because now as the arbitrator I control the brainleaf zombies and this photo the two brainleaf zombies in the upper left hand corner of the battlefield charge directly into Mayday but luckily for her though she actually escapes unscathed because these brainleaf zombies were unable to hit her. Uh, I think one actually did manage to hit her I believe but was unable to wound her as well so she's currently engaged now with two different brainleaf zombies. And at the same time, my two Brainleaf Zombies also charge directly into uh, Miss Spectre. I believe one of them just falls just a few, I think like a half inch short of actually hitting her. So because that, his charge was failed. Same thing with the other zombie as well. So they're both just kind of stacked up in a line trying to get to Miss Spectre as well and to try and engage her in close combat. So with the action phase over with, you go directly to the end phase. So in the end phase, you start making recovery rolls, and for the very first one is Newbie. Unfortunately for him though, he did roll another flesh wound, so because that, he does automatically go out of action. And for his lasting injury result, he ended up with a 13, which is out cold result. Which is actually the best result you can get, because all it means is that he's just down for the fight, but he'll be okay for the rest of the uh, campaign. And at the same time, my Brain Leaf Zombie that was engaging with the uh, members of Section 8 up here in the center of the battlefield, he rolls an out of action result, so because that, he just dies. And at the same time, uh, Red Cap Killer does get back on his feet again, and because AWOL Al is in three inches of him, uh, he actually gets to make two rolls with the injury dice to see exactly what happens to him to see if he recovers. One was a flesh wound, the other one was seriously injured, and because he's getting assistant from AWOL Al, he takes the flesh wound and gets back on his feet again. So now because of that, Red Cap Killer is now only toughness uh, two. He's got actually toughness four on this guy, so he is a little bit easier to wound, but at the same time though, as we've seen in previous battle reports, Red, Heart, uh, Red Cap Killer is not to be trifled with. That guy is super deadly with that plasma pistol and bolt pistol combo and he's a really good gunfighter and uh, that makes up the recovery rolls for all the gangs on this one and once again the fungal horror also grows it grows this time on the top center tile of the battlefield right between red harvest as well as mayday and then four more brain leaf zombies also pop up with that as well two of the brain leaf zombies are right behind red harvest which could be pretty bad for him and he also got two more zombies in the bottom left hand corner which could be bad for these guys because they could easily be swarmed now over three zombies apiece if they're not really careful and that pretty much ends turn number two on this one all right, so here's the end of turn number two. Here's an overhead shot of the entirety of the battlefield. As you can see, two forests of carnivorous plants have spread it out in the top left-hand corner and top center of the battlefield, with a grand total of eight uh, brainleaf zombies now being on the battlefield as well. At the same time, the firefight between Section 8 as well as the sleeping dogs in the middle of the battlefield is still getting pretty intense as always. And the reason why is because there is no cover between those two gangs, so they're just kind of like in the middle of it, just shooting at each other out in the middle of the dome, which is actually kind of crazy as well. And at the same time, the bottom right-hand corner 
corner, there's a race to try to get access to that last plant burst around ammo crate with uh, the Kurgan as well as the Pig Killer trying to assault that area, as well as Slick as uh, sorry Slight as well as uh, Silk trying to stop them from doing that as well. And that pretty much ends turn number two on this one. So with that, we go directly to the top of turn number three, and both my friends Sergeant Sigmarine as well as Dark Lord Mac they roll off for initiative to see who goes first. All right, so that takes directly to the top of turn number three for the Delax, and my friend Sergeant Sigmaring gets to go first. So he decides to do a group activation with his gang leader, Mr. Sinister. And since he's within three inches of both uh, Ghost as well as Slick and Reckless, he decides to group activate those guys as well. Reckless actually spends a double char uh, action to charge four directly into the Brainleaf Zombie, and then finishes that guy off with the Coup de Gras, putting that Brainleaf Zombie directly out of action. He also nets himself a pretty nice experience point as well. At the same time, both Ghost as well as Slick, they actually fight against that zombie as well. Slick actually spends a basic action to get back on his feet again to escape pinning, and then he of course puts his attack directly into that brain leaf zombie, and exactly the same thing happens with Ghost as well. Unfortunately for both of those fighters though, they just flubbed their attack roll, so not much really happened and the brain leaf zombie is still completely fine. And if you're wondering why that is the case, that is because uh, Slick is actually only armed with a bolt gun, so he's actually fighting with his bare hands, whereas Ghost is a juvie, he's got a 5 of weapon skill, so that part's kind of complicated. And to make matters worse, when Mr. Sinister opens his fire with his uh, long rifle directly into uh, Grub Tarzan, he does manage to hit him, but unfortunately he was unable to wound him again. So because of that, Grub Tarzan is now just laying on the ground pinned, and that's really about the only thing that really happened from that point. Now this next photo I do have to apologize for because this took place after several activations. I didn't get a chance to take a photo of all the things that were occurring. I'm sorry, I was just enjoying watching my two friends fighting it out and I forgot to take photos of it. So I do apologize for this one. This photo is after taking action after a couple of activations. What ended up happening was this. Uh, Dark Lord Mac activated AWOL Al who's a champion, and because of that, he group activates uh, Grub Tarzan as well. Now, Grub Tarzan, of course, spends a basic action to get back on his feet again, and he spends a basic action to open fire with his execution round. At the same time, AWOL Al opens fire with his bolt gun twice directly into the sleeping dogs. And, and then injuries and wounds occurred uh, from those shots as well, and I'm going to show you that picture here in a second. Now, in order to return fire, my friend uh, Sergeant Sigmund decides to activate Painless Joe, who then also opens up this plasma gun as well. But unfortunately for him, when he went to shoot at Red Cap Killer, he rolled a bunch of ones for his shooting, so because of that, his shots completely missed. And then we jump back, of course, to Dark Lord Mac, who then activates Red Cap Killer. Red Cap Killer spends a basic action to move up 5 inches, and he spends another basic action to shoot off his two guns, his uh, plasma pistol as well as his bolt gun. And so the next picture we're going to see the result of all that shooting that took place back and forth between the sleeping dogs as well as Section 8. As you can see in this photo, it ended up being an absolute slaughter for the uh, Section 8. They just gunned down a bunch of sleeping dogs like it was nobody's business. When it was all said and done, Slick gets seriously injured. Uh, the brain leaf zombie that he was fighting against goes out of action. Reckless gets seriously injured as well with a flush wound, so he's laying on the ground bleeding out. At the same time, Painless Joe is also laying on the ground seriously injured, and he's also bleeding out as well. If I remember correctly, I believe it was uh, AWOL Al that managed to take out Slick as well as the brain leaf zombie. Uh, Grub Tarzan actually missed his shots and at the same time it was Ray Cap Killer that managed to put a serious injury onto both Reckless as well as Painless Joe as well so because of that all three of those fighters will need to roll up on the uh, on a recovery rolls to see exactly what happens to them in the end phase to make matters worse the Juvie Ghost lost his cool and he failed his cool check so because of that he runs away some like eight inches away from the Bray Leaf Zombie around the corner so he is currently broken and Mr. Sinister is standing there looking at his gang members being shot to pieces by Section 8. Meanwhile, in the bottom right-hand corner of the table, uh, my friend uh, Sergeant Sigmarine actually activates uh, Silk. She actually moves up her basic movement lines of 5 inches to get a good line of shot directly towards the Kurgan, and she opens fire with her auto gun. Unfortunately for her, though, she failed to manage to hit that guy, so not much really happened from there. However, the Kurgan then spend, gets activated next. Uh, Dark Lord Max spends a double action for him to charge forward directly into Silk, and in close combat, not only did he manage to hit her with both his servo claws, he also managed to put her out of action as well, and she gets an out-cold result as a result of that. He then follows up with another 3 inch follow through and charges directly into Slick as well, so because of that now Slick as well as the Kurgan are engaged in close combat against one another. In the top left hand corner, uh, Miss Spectre activates next, she spends a double action charge directly into her first Brainleaf Zombie, and not only does she manage to kill that guy, she managed to put that Brainleaf uh, brain Zombie out of action as well. And once again she also follows through with another 3 inch action and she charges directly into the second Brainleaf Zombie as well. 
Meanwhile, on the top of the battlefield, Red Harvest goes next, and he then activates Manchurian Black for Dark Lord Mac. Manchurian Black charges directly into one of the plague zombies up in the uh, not plague zombies, one of the brainleaf zombies at the top. Manages to put that brainleaf zombie at out of action as well with close combat, and then Red Harvest did exactly the same thing with his brain uh, brainleaf uh, brainleaf zombie, charges directly into the top as well, and also putting that brainleaf zombie out of action as well. Meanwhile, for the rest of the phase, pretty much dedicated to Dark Lord Mac at this point because the rest of the sleeping dogs are either down or out of action. So because of that, Mayday, she attacks Nyx, managed to not only does she manage to hit her brain leaf zombie, but also managed to put that guy out of action as well, which is actually pretty cool. And on the bottom right hand corner of the battlefield, the pit killer does actually move up a basic action of 5 inches, moving up 4 so that way he gets closer to Painless Joe. And he also opens up with his execution rounds directly into Painless Joe as well. But unfortunately, the pit killer, he misses shot as well, so not much is really occurring from that side. So, the rest of the phase is actually dedicated to Brainleaf Zombies from yours truly, so I decided to charge into my two Brainleaf Zombies directly into Mayday, so now she's stuck in a pincer attack, being attacked by two Brainleaf Zombies, and the other Brainleaf Zombie stumbles forward a couple inches through the fungal forest heading towards Red Cap Killer. And my final Brainleaf Zombie does try to attack against Miss Spectre, but unfortunately for him though, he wasn't able to cause any injuries, so the two of them are still engaged in close combat. So with the end of the action phase, we go directly to the top of the end phase, and in the end phase, the very first thing that my friend Sergeant Sinemary has to do, of course, is take a bottle test, which unfortunately he fails. So because of that, his gang members will need to take cool checks in the next turns and every turn afterwards to see if they actually uh, panic and flee the battlefield. And at the same time, he also loses a point of reputation because his gang decided to bottle out. And to make matters worse for his recovery rolls, for Slick, as well as Reckless, as well as Painless Joe, those three guys are still seriously injured, so they're sp all three of them are still laying on the ground, and they're all pretty much bleeding out at this point. So with the end phase over, that takes directly to the end of the turn. And here's an Orvet shot in the entirety of the battlefield. As you can see, uh, both the gang members in the top left hand and bottom right hand corner are currently engaged in close combat. Same thing with the Brainleaf Zombies as well as the Venators on the top of the screen. And to make matters worse, as you can see in the center of the battlefield, uh, the Sleeping Dogs are pretty much just folding at this point because they're being outgunned by the Venators. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that takes us directly to the end of the game with the Venators of Section 8, meaning they managed to win on this one. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go directly to the After Action Report and to the post-game, because this battle report is now officially over. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. All right, now it's time for the post game, and the very first game we're going to talk about is the Sleeping Dogs. So for the injuries, they only suffered two injuries in this battle report. That was both Silk as well as Newbie, and they both ended up with the out-called results, so not much really happened there for the injuries. For advancements, Painless Joe actually leveled up to uh, level 3, earning plus 1 to his cool check, and same with Miss Spectre, she also leveled up, I believe, to level 2 is what she ended up doing, earning plus 1 to her ballistic skill, so now she's even deadlier shooter as well. From their territories, uh, the Sleeping Dogs earned plus 1 reputation from their settlement, as well as 20 credits, and from their narco den, they actually managed to secure 20 credits from that one as well. In the merchant phase, they purchased stun grenades for Miss Spectre, Silk, Mr. Smug, as well as Slick. And for the reputation, they earned one point of reputation from their settlement, but they also lost that point of reputation from bottling out as well, bringing their grand total reputation to 11 points. Their new record now is at 2 wins as well as 5 losses, and their new gang rating now is at 1,631 points. So now we move on to the winners of this battle report, which is Section 8 of the Venators. For the injuries, they actually suffered no injuries on this one, so because of that, there was no need for injury rolls. And at the same time, AWOL Al, I believe he also levels up to level 3 as well, earning plus 1 to his cool check as well. From their territories, from their one settlement, they earn 1 point of reputation as well as 20 credits. And in the merchant phase, they place all 20 credits into their stash, because uh, they wanted to save that money up for later. From the reputation, they actually earned 4 points of reputation from the scenario, earning 3 reputation points from winning the scenario, as well as 1 point of reputation from AWOL Al, who managed to destroy one of the fungal horrors, so bringing their grand total to 20 points of reputation in total. Their new record now is at 4 wins as well as 3 losses, and their gang rating is at 1,810 points. So that's going to do it for this one, you guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us, as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest greatest hobby news on this channel that's good to do for this one you guys we'll catch you guys in the next one peace out